Dr. Patrick Jones here from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. And uh, as you can sort of see, it's winter here in Idaho. And uh, winter is a time when, you know, most people don't think about herbal medicine, but there's actually some, some really important things you can do in the winter and things you can harvest and do. And sometimes the winter is a time you really need some of these medicines. So it's good to know uh, what you can use and where you can get it this time of year. So I uh, wanted to start with this rascal. This is... Uh, Prunus virginiana, it's a choke cherry, or uh, in the trade they call it wild cherry bark. And uh, this is a really good time to harvest it. You can harvest it anytime after the tree fruits. Um, cherries, like all the stone fruits, have some cyanide in them. And uh, when the fruit puts on, the tree puts the cyanide into the pit of the fruit, right? Uh, and so there's less of it in the bark. So that's when you want it, after they fruit. But, uh, you know, fall, winter, late summer, all good times to harvest it. And uh, this is just one of the ornamental trees on our place that we've planted. And uh, you can hear Ozzy the herb hound over there helping us with our video. Anyway, um, and uh, so, you know, you gotta prune them anyway, so you might as well prune them and get some medicine, right? So I've got my nippers here. Oh, here they are. <clears throat> got my nippers here. And uh, we're just going to take this branch off, and I'll show you how we harvest that tree. Now, you want to harvest the bark from the branches. You don't want to take the bark off of the trunk or the main branches of the tree. You'll really damage it and injure it, right? But these branches that we're, that we're kind of wanting to thin out and rearrange a little bit are perfect candidates for, for herbal medicine. So let me show you how to get that bark off. All right, so we've got our branch here, and I'm just gonna cut this into, you know, more user-friendly sizes. <laughs> all right. And then uh, all you need is a good knife, and I'll tell you what, this is a great little knife. Uh, this is a cold steel tough light. They're not very expensive. Seems like they're 20 or 30 bucks, I don't know. Um, but, uh, that's just a knife I always have on me, and it's tremendous for this kind of work. It's got a Warncliffe blade style that makes it easy to cut stuff. Stays sharp forever. I don't think I've ever sharpened this knife. And uh, anyway, it just does a nice job. So, what we're after, get all these little guys off. And then we're just gonna make a, kind of girdle this around and cut it. And then we'll make a long cut down the length of it. And then, if I had my glasses, I could see where I made that cut. There it is. The fewer little nubs and branches there are, the easier it is to get this stuff off. But uh, it's actually kind of frozen today. <laughs> so it's giving me fits here. <laughs> but this is the, the medicine, this green inner bark. Okay, that's what you want. This gray bark is not the medicine, it's the inner bark. And that's the case almost always uh, with barks that are medicine, you know, whether it's, you know, wild cherry bark or cramp bark or any of those guys where the bark's the medicine, um, it's that inner bark. And so uh, sometimes, depending on the time of the year and the stage that the plant's in, sometimes that stuff will peel right off. If it won't, you know, peel it right off with your knife and get it off of there. And honestly, if it's, uh, if the gray bark is very thin, I just don't worry about it. And on wild cherry, it tends to be very thin. And so I just leave that on and we just process all of it. <laughs> so we're just taking that off, taking the green stuff, because that's what we want, right? That's the good stuff. We don't want to lose that. Oh, 
like I say, some times of the year that stuff will peel right off. If you do this in the fall or in the late summer, it's a little easier to get it off and, uh, and it'll peel right off of there. This time of year it's a little bit cold and so it tends to be a little stickier. <laughs> but uh, you get the idea that we're getting that green inner bark off of there. And so what is this plant good for? Well, wild cherry bark is a tremendous cough suppressant, okay? So that's a good thing this time of year, isn't it? To have a, something to help you with a cough. Um, it's also a pretty good expectorant, okay? So an expectorant is an herb that breaks up the mucus in your lungs and gets things moving a little bit. Um, so if you've got, you know, bronchitis or something like that, then that's a good herb for that. It's a better, it's a better cough suppressant than it is an expectorant. Okay, it's not the best expectorant. Um, my favorite expectorant is probably elecampane root. That's a tremendous expectorant. Gumweed, tremendous expectorant. But, uh, but wild cherry bark's all right for that too. And uh, if you're taking it for the cough suppressant, then uh, it's nice to have a little expectorant action there too. So anyway, that's how you get it off. And, and I can smell, it has this really rich, beautiful almond uh, aroma. And that of course is the cyanide, right? Because cyanide smells nice. <laughs> but cyanide is not medicinal. So write that down. Uh, that's something we want to remember. But anyway, you can get that, uh, that inner green bark, that cambium layer off of the wood, and then that's your medicine. And then I would just dry that. And uh, when it's dry, I, what we usually do is we're grinding that up in a, in a blender and powdering it. And then that's your herb. You can take it like that, you know, just as a dry powder. Um, you can make a tea out of it. You can make a tincture. The dose of this herb for an adult is about a rounded teaspoon of the dry herb. Okay, and that's a pretty typical dosage for most herbs. Anyway, that's wild cherry bark, and uh, that's one that you can harvest this time of year if you need it, and you're probably gonna need it this time of year, so. All right, so we talked about wild cherry bark. What's another herb we can harvest this time of year? Let's go look, shall we? See if we can find some rose hips. <music> Here we are. This is a, a wild rose bush, and uh, these are the the kinds of hips I, I like. You can use any hip. You can use any hip for any rose, but uh, I like these wild ones. And these ones are just uh, a tiny bit past their prime, but I'd still harvest these. The best time to harvest these is right after the first frost. Okay, but if you needed them this time of year, if you're in your cabin up in the woods and and you need them really bad, go get them. You know they're still good. Um, so the hip is the fruit of the rose, okay? And it produces that fruit from the flower after the flower, so you can see here is the flower. And when the flower dies, then you get this little fruit body on the bottom. So what do we use them for? <laughs> Ozzy is helping us a lot. Hey, Ozzy, you're a bad herb hound. Sit. Anyway, so what do we use them for? We use the rose hips principally as a source of vitamin C, okay? Uh, more vitamin C than citrus in these little guys. You just eat them. I, the, you can eat them fresh if you want. Um, and what you do is just slice them open. There's little seeds in there and you wanna get the seeds out. And there's little hairs in there and you wanna get those out. But if you scrape out the little seeds and the hairs, you got fruit leather, basically. And they taste pretty good and they've got, like I say, tons of vitamin C. Um, what I do is I just dry them. And, uh, and then once they're dry, I put them in a blender, powder them, and then I do what I do with all the herbs, you know, make a tea, just throw the powder in some juice, whatever you want to do. Probably a good idea to strain that tea through a cloth to get the little hairs out because they might be a little irritating. But uh, that's a really important source of vitamin C in the winter. You know, if you were out in the boondock somewhere and uh, you don't have enough vitamin C and, and your teeth start falling out because you got scurvy, uh, rose hips is your buddy, right? Another really important source of vitamin C in that kind of a scenario would be pine needles from pine trees, okay? And the same thing, you just take the pine needles and uh, you can make a tea out of those and, uh, and then you got a pretty good source of vitamin C there too. So anyway, those are rose hips. So as long as we're standing here right next to the rose bush, we've got a hawthorn tree and this is a tree we harvest from too. Uh, right now the berries are on here. You can see the, 
the red berries, uh, the hawthorn berry. And that's what most people use, frankly, for the medicine. Um, but the leaf and the flower are also medicinal. And I use the flower almost exclusively. And why is that? Well, it's because the birds are way better at harvesting the berries than I am, right? And so <laughs> if I wait for berries, I don't get very many because uh, those little birds will get them, you know, about a week before I want them, they'll get them. Uh, so I usually harvest the flower. But uh, the berry is as good, certainly, as the flower and, and uh, is what most people in herbal medicine use. Um, these are probably just a little bit past. I'd probably harvest these, you know, late summer, early fall. But uh, the berry from the hawthorn tree or the flower is a really good heart tonic. It's just really a tremendous support to the heart. Um, I've used it in a lot of heart cases. I've used it in blood pressure cases. Um, it doesn't really lower blood pressure directly like some of the plants do, but it just supports things and makes the whole cardiovascular system work better. Um, it does take several weeks for Hawthorne to kick in, so don't give up on it, you know, two days after you start taking it. But uh, anyway, great plant. This is an old tree. This is probably a 75-year-old tree. But uh, anyway, Hawthorne berry. Yeah. All right. Doc Jones here from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine and Ozzy the Herb Hound, uh, who's responsible for editing all of our content. So if you've noticed a little, you know, slide on that area, that's, that's to be expected. But anyway, thanks for watching. There's some things you can do in the winter. When all your plants are sleeping, you can still get some herbal medicines. So uh, we'd appreciate it. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. There's a little button you can click down there. And uh, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notifications when we put something else up. And uh, share this with your friends, then they can learn about herbal medicine too. So this is Dr. Patrick Jones, and thanks for watching.